Okay, we're going to go ahead and start with uh, section 9.4, which I think is the most important section that we've looked at uh, so far in our dealings with trig. Um, I think the techniques that we learn in this section are the most useful. I think that it's the best way to interpret evaluating trig functions going forward. I like it way better than the unit circle, uh, definitely. So uh, we're going to look at trigonometric functions of any angle. And there's a few things that we're going to look at uh, in this lesson. So the first being uh, our definition of trig functions of any angle. Okay, so we're going to let theta be an angle in standard position with the ordered pair x comma y a point on the terminal side of theta. And then we're going to define r as the square root of x squared plus y squared. And that's going to be uh, greater than 0. So if you think about like what r is measuring, uh, r is measuring the distance in between the point 0 comma 0 and then the point x comma y. Because if you guys remember the distance formula, the distance formula is going to be the square root of the distance between the x coordinates. So that's going to be x minus 0 quantity squared plus the distance between the y coordinates, which is going to be y minus 0 quantity squared. OK, so you can think of r. Um, as just being the distance in between those two points. And like if you picture drawing a right triangle like this, this leg here has a length of x. The vertical length or vertical leg has a length of y. Uh, it's kind of similar to what we did with the unit circle. What makes the unit circle definition different is that the R value was always equal to 1. So if you guys remember how we'd like to find sine, cosine, and tangent, sine was the Y coordinate of our point on the unit circle. Cosine was the X coordinate of the point on the unit circle. And tangent still was Y over X. What makes this different is this technique that we're talking about now um, we can use this technique where um, the distance between our point and the origin is not one. So it's like a more um, like broad definition where the unit circle definition was like a more uh, specific definition. So like this definition that we're going to come up with here is the same as the unit circle definition. It's just with the unit circle definition, the R values were equal to 1. OK, so we define sine as y over r. Cosine we define as x over r. Tangent is y over x, provided that x does not equal 0. And then cosecant, secant, and cotangent are just the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent, respectively. So cosecant is r over y, provided y does not equal 0. Secant is r over x, provided x does not equal 0. And cotangent is x over y, provided that y does not equal 0. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, that definition that we came up with, and we want to take a look at the x, y, and r values in each of the four quadrants. OK, and whenever we have the x, y, and r values in each of the four quadrants, we can figure out what trig functions are going to be positive in each of the four quadrants. OK, so to go ahead and fill this out, we know r is always going to be greater than 0. So we're going to make the r value greater than 0 in each of the four quadrants. When we think about points that lie in quadrant 1, so if a point lies in quadrant 1, both the x and y coordinates of that point have to be greater than 0. If our point lies in quadrant 2, the x-coordinate of the point is negative. The y-coordinate of the point is positive. For points that lie in quadrant 3, both the x and y-coordinates of the point are negative. And for points that lie in quadrant 4, x is going to be positive and y is going to be negative. OK, so once we have the values, um, <clears throat> 
of x, y, and r, we can figure out what trig functions are positive in each of the four quadrants. So since x, y, and r are positive, like all of them are positive in quadrant one, that means that all trig functions are positive. When we look at in quadrant two, the y value and r values are positive. So ratios that involve y and r only are the only trig functions that are going to be positive in quadrant two. So that is going to be sine and its reciprocal cosecant are positive in quadrant two. When we look at points that lie in quadrant three, the R value is the only one that's positive. But if we have ratios that deal with Y and X only, if we take a negative divided by a negative, that's going to be positive. So our only ratios that deal with X and Y are tangent and its reciprocal cotangent. So tangent and cotangent are positive. And when we look at points that lie in quadrant four, the X value and R value are positive. So the ratios that deal with X and R only are going to be positive, which are going to be cosine and its reciprocal secant are positive. Okay, so we actually have like a little phrase that we use in math to help us remember what trig functions are positive in each of the four quadrants. And that phrase is all students take calculus. So in quadrant one, all of the trig functions are positive. In quadrant two, student starts with the letter S as does sine. So sine and cosecant are positive. Take starts with the letter T as does tangent. So tangent and cotangent are positive in quadrant three, and calculus starts with the letter C as does cosine. So cosine and its reciprocal secant are positive in quadrant four. So you wanna remember that, that, that saying, that phrase, that's gonna help you uh, as we continue moving through today's lesson. Okay, so let's get into some examples uh, involving what we just discussed. So directions say to let uh, the ordered pair negative 2, 3 be a point on the terminal side of angle theta. And then we're asked to find the sine of theta, the cosine of theta, and the tangent of theta. Okay, so here's our point, negative 2, 3. For us to figure out sine, cosine, and tangent, the one piece of the puzzle that we're missing is the value of r. So to find the value of r, um, you, we can plug into that formula where r is equal to the square root of the x-coordinate squared, which is negative 2 squared, plus the y-coordinate squared, which is 3 squared. Or another way for you to think of that is r is going to be the distance between the origin, which is the point 0, 0, and then the point on the terminal side, which is negative 2, 3. And then you can use the distance formula to figure out uh, what the length of r is. Okay, so when we calculate r... Uh, r is going to be the square root of negative 2 squared, which is 4, plus 3 squared, which is 9, which makes r equal to rad 13. <clears throat> okay, so let's figure out sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, so we define sine as y over r. So the y-coordinate of our point is 3 over the r value, which is rad 13 which rationalizes to 3 rad 13 over 13. Cosine is x over r, so that's negative 2 over rad 13, which rationalizes to negative 2 rad 13 over 13. And then tangent is y over x, which is 3 over negative 2, which becomes negative 3 halves. Now, kind of a, a quick way for you to check to make sure that you set these ratios up properly is, if we think about what quadrant the ordered pair negative 2, 3 lies in, I'm just going to do like a quick little sketch. So the ordered pair negative 2, 3 is going to be somewhere in there. It's going to lie in quadrant 2. 
so if we think about the, the, the phrase that we came up with just before, all students take calculus, if, we're, if our point lies in quadrant two, the only trig functions that are positive in quadrant two are sine and cosecant, which sine is our positive ratio here, both cosine and tangent are negative. So leads me to think that we set up those ratios properly. Okay, let's go ahead and work on the next one. So directions here say given the sine of theta is equal to 4 over 5 <coughs> and the tangent of theta is less than 0, we want to find the cosine of angle theta and the cosecant of angle theta. Okay, so first thing we want to do here is we want to figure out what quadrant our angle theta lies in. Okay. So when we look at the ratio that we're given for sine, we're told that the sine of theta is 4 over 5. So sine is positive, and we know sine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. We're also told that tangent is negative, so all students take tangent is going to be positive in quadrants 1 and 3, and it's going to be negative in quadrants 2 and 4. So the quadrant that those two statements have in common, which is quadrant 2, that's going to be the quadrant that our angle lies in. Okay, so we know our angle lies in quadrant 2. Now, what we can do, so if you want, like you can draw your triangle where the angle lies in quadrant 2. Uh, I typically don't do that with these problems. All I typically do is uh, do what we did in the previous section where we can draw a right triangle modeling this situation. Okay, so if we know the sine of theta is four over five, sine is the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side length. So that missing side length is gonna be three. That's a three, four, five right triangle. And then I'm going to find cosine and cosecant based on uh, the side length relationships in that right triangle. So the cosine of angle theta, cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 3 over 5. And then I'm going to use the quadrant that that angle lies in to determine whether that ratio is positive or negative. So in quadrant 2, it's all students. So sine and its reciprocal cosecant are positive, which means that cosine is going to be negative. And to find the cosecant of angle theta, you can do that one of two ways. If you remember that sine and cosecant are reciprocals, that's fine. So that's going to be 5 over 4. Or if you want to use like the side length relationships, cosecant is defined as hypotenuse over opposite which is 5 over 4, and we know that sine and cosecant are positive in quadrant 2. Okay, so that gives us our ratio in uh, for cosine and cosecant in quadrant 2. All right, I want you guys to use the same approach to do the next example. Um, so I'm going to have you pause the video real quick. When you're done, go ahead and turn it back on. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Um, so first piece of information we want to determine is what quadrant the angle lies in. So this angle here, if cosine is negative, we know cosine is negative in quadrants two and quadrant three. And if sine is negative, we know sine is negative in quadrants three and quadrant four. So the quadrant that those two statements have in common uh, is quadrant three. So we know our angle lies in quadrant three. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and diagram a right triangle here. If you want to draw the right triangle in quadrant three, that's fine. I just don't do that for these examples. So uh, we know cosine is negative 12 over 13. So if we're drawing the right triangle, we know the side lengths in a triangle have to be positive. So cosine is adjacent, which is going to make that side length 12 over hypotenuse, which makes the hypotenuse 13. Uh, and this is another special right triangle, a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. Uh, so once we have that, we can figure out 
secant and tangent. Again, you have a couple of options for figuring out secant. If you know that secant and cosine are reciprocals, then that's going to make the secant negative 13 over 12. If you don't want to do it that way, you can say that secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, which is positive 13 over 12. And then we know secant is going to be negative in quadrant three. So that makes that ratio negative 13 over 12. Uh, tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is 5 over 12. And in quadrant three, all students take. So take starts with T as does tangent. So tangent has to be positive in quadrant three. All right, we'll continue this video in the next lesson.